Time for our Healthy Matters segment with our friends from the Georgia Department of Public Health. Earlier this month, we talked about substance abuse among, among the CSRA through inpatient and outpatient treatment, as well as the opioid issues we're experiencing in our area. Well, the response was overwhelming. Joining us again is patient navigator Lisa Ann Wheeler, along with Beverly Brown, opioid public health analyst, and Hope House program coordinator Brittany Coleman. Ladies, good to see you. Thank good, you morning. Morning. Good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Good uh, morning. Beverly, you're the opioid public health analyst. Um, break down for us what opioids are. So you have synthetic opioids and you have the ones that you normally would get from your doctor's office. Right now we're seeing an uptick in the synthetic opioids, which is press pills. Um, a lot of people are getting counterfeit pills on the street and it is wreaking havoc in our neighborhoods. You hear a lot of the stories about even if they're, even if someone's taking a drug that it's laced with fentanyl or something other mm -hmm. thing like that, correct? Absolutely. We don't we always preach don't take pills that were prescribed for someone else and absolutely don't take street drugs. And let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms people should be aware of. So right now, if you're looking into an overdose, you wanna, you'll want to, you notice that the person is having shallow breathing, they may have pinpoint pupils, they may have cyanosis, or their lips and fingertips are turning blue, and you would want to uh, use Narcan as an opioid antagonist or the antidote for opioids to get them awake, and you would take it stick it in their nostril and you'll spray it. It's a simple, it's very simple. Um, it doesn't affect you if you haven't taken an, op an opioid or you, if you took something else. The key right now is we want to get you back breathing until EMS arrives. Now, how does Opioid Public Health Department address the situation in our area? Do you go through that as well? So right now, I cover 13 counties in the CSRA, and I go out and I do naloxone education with different public entities and the community entities because we want to saturate the community with Narcan. And Brittany, we want to touch on an organization that DPH mm -hmm. partners with, okay? Mm -hmm. We always love to talk about these partnerships, yeah, really helps DPH yeah. out. Talk to us about Hope House. Absolutely. Um, Hope House is a substance use treatment center for women here in Augusta. We offer residential and outpatient services, and a lot of people aren't aware, but our services are actually free for those that qualify. Um, our residential program, we offer safe and stable housing on-site. We've got 42 on-site apartments, um, and we also allow mothers to bring their children with them to treatment. Um, outpatient is our lower level of care. That's for people that have their own housing and need a little bit more flexibility with their treatment process. Um, we offer transportation to everyone that needs it. We offer child care to everyone that needs it. We've got a really great child care center on site um, that enables the mothers to focus on their treatment, but also enables us the opportunity to get services for the kids if they need them as well. And Lisa Ann, uh, the big word that we always talk about every time we talk to you is, is Free. It's I mean, the this greatest four-letter word in yeah, the world. Exactly. And this is just a phenomenal partnership. Really, the DPH depends on Hope House mm -hmm. to take care of our patients. So all of these, and uh, all of these and availabilities versa, right? and options, yeah, uh, yeah, all available for everybody uh, in our area. Uh, quickly, before while we still have time, you actually have another event that's coming up as well. Yes, my monthly event. DPH? Yes. yes. It's the Project Refresh Shower Day. And this is near and dear to my heart. It's the last work day of every month mm -hmm. from 9 to 12, next Thursday, the 29th. Free food, clothing, haircuts, hairstyles, manicures, clothing, food, shoes, you name it, we've got it. And we also have transportation. Um, Augusta Transit has given us a bus. We stop at four stops. Um, I think you had those listed. Mm -hmm. It is um, Gap Ministries, Master's Table Soup Kitchen, Broad Street Transfer Station, and Center for Hope. All right, check that out. Yes. And again, it all wraps up at 950 Lenny Walker Boulevard. Absolutely. Uh, and a way to contact if somebody wants more information. Just reach out to me, 706-513-1033. All right. And if people need to get in contact with Hope House, they can also reach out to you too. They or can. Or yes. you directly. Yeah, you can go to our website, hopehouseaugusta.org. Um, you can call our intake team. You can find their inf information on the, the website there. And I think it's important to note, too, for people, if you have items to donate, you guys also accept, I mean, both yes. DPH yes. and Hope yes. House, is that yes. correct? Yes, we're uh, grant funded. We have a lot of things our grants don't cover, so we do rely on donations. We need a lot of consumable goods, anything to run those 42 households. We need laundry detergent, paper products. Um, really anything you can think of that a family might need on a regular basis. All right. And of course, the need if there is a drug addiction in your family and you need help, 
this is also the place mm -hmm. to call to find that out as well. Beverly, Brittany, Lisa Ann, thank you so much oh, for absolutely. joining us. Thank, thank you so much.